Hi. In the last video, I explained how we can use discrete structures to model and reason about other domains. Those domains might be mathematical domains, the domain of natural numbers, for example, natural number arithmetic, could be a concrete or physical domain, like a domain of, of drones flying around in the air or of, of people and their ancestors. I also explained that in this class we're going to make these ideas more, more concrete and useful by using an automated um, reasoning system to essentially implement uh, discrete structures uh, and, and to reason about them. Um, and the name of this uh, automated tool is the lean, that we'll use this semester is it, it's called the Lean Prover. Um, we'll talk more about the Lean Prover later, but for now I just wanted to give you a sense of what it feels like to use the Lean Prover. So I'm going to continue with the example from, from the last lecture, the example of using a binary tree of people to, uh, to, represent, uh, to represent one's ancestry. And the main point that I want you to take away from this uh, short video is that um, this tool basically allows you to express ideas in discrete mathematics with great precision and clarity and ease. Uh, there's always an overhead of learning any new uh, formal language, and the, the language of the Lean Prover, it's a uh, language called constructive logic. Um, it takes some time to uh, get used to. Uh, you have to put effort in and you have to practice it, but it's not that bad. And, um, and, uh, and at the end of the day, if you know it, then you can claim that you know, that you know constructive logic. And, 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 uh, and, and, and we'll see that we can embed many, many, many discrete structures. We can implement reason about many different kinds of discrete structures in this environment. Okay, so um, let's get started. What I'm going to do today, let me transition over to, uh, over to the lean screen. And hello, here I am. Here I am down in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Sorry about the talking head here. I have the main uh, lean programming screen up and running here. I've created a file called ancestry.lean, which you can see up here in the upper left corner. Uh, the name of the file and the path on my Windows machine to this file is, is listed here. Uh, and I'm currently editing line one. Down the left hand side of the uh, this is VS Code uh, programming environment with a Lean Prover plugin. Um, you can use VS Code to edit many uh, different kinds of uh, uh, programming files, from Java to Python to C++, and in this place, in this case, Lean. Okay, so we're going to get started. And what we're going to do here uh, is to uh, define a discrete structure called binary tree of people, and Again, the main message to take away is that what I'm going to type in to define a binary tree of people or to define the set of all possible binary trees of people will follow directly from uh, the definition of binary trees of people that we gave uh, in the last lecture. So if you've wrapped your head around how those two constructors, those two binary tree of people cases, define an infinite set of trees, then this should be very, very straightforward. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to define a new data type called binary tree of people, and I'm just going to abbreviate that again, BTP. So there's a keyword in the Lean Prover's language called inductive, and it's a keyword that introduces the definition of a new data type. The data type we're going to introduce is called BTP, a binary tree of people. And we're going to say that the type of BTP is type, because BTP is meant to be a type. And a type is of, in lean is of type big T type. That might be a little confusing. If you want to, you can just ignore this part uh, for now, and uh, it won't make any difference uh, for this example. Now, what is a binary tree of people? Well, as we said last time, it's either empty, there are two cases, or, or it's a node with three additional fields. The name of a person of type string and two additional fields, we'll call them left and right, of type of type what? I'm going to put an underscore right here and uh, 
and that tells Lean to, you know, to fill in, uh, to try to fill in this missing piece of information. We have this big, uh, uh, fancy error message here that basically st is Lean telling us it doesn't know how to fill in that type. It doesn't know what type this should be. But I bet you know what type this should be. A binary tree of people is either empty or it's a node with a name and two subtrees left and right. So what must their type be? Well, there's the circularity. There's the inductive definition. They are themselves binary trees of people. That's it. Compare this definition in the Lean Prover to the definition and to the graphical representations I gave you in the last lecture, and you'll see that they're exactly the same. That's it. Okay? In addition to defining this data type, in this lecture I'll also define an operation, a function, if you will, that takes a binary tree of people as an argument or as an input, and that counts up the number of non-empty nodes in that binary tree and outputs the result as a natural number. Okay? Um, but before we do that operation, let's use our data type to model a couple of ancestry trees. So just as in the last lecture, let's start off by representing the empty tree. I'm going to define a new value, and I'm going to call it no one. We're going to model a world in which we're not looking at anyone's ancestry. So I will say define the name of my object, colon equals. It's the way of binding a name to a value, an object. And I want my object to be a binary tree of people, and in particular, I want it to be the empty tree. That's it. Okay? So that's how we represent the empty, the, the empty binary tree of people. Okay? Now let's define another binary tree that represents just me without my parents. For that, I would define, let's call this object just me. And I want to have it be bound to a non-empty binary tree in which I'm the only person. So there's only two possibilities for an, a binary tree. Either it's empty or it's not empty, in which case it contains the name of a person and two smaller trees. So clearly, if I want to represent myself, going back zero generations, if you will, as the only element in a binary tree, I can't use empty, so I must use node. So btp.node is the constructor that I'll use. Each of these elements following a, an, a vertical bar is called a constructor. And this particular constructor takes three arguments, which I now need to provide. And I could provide them all on one line like this. The first argument is a string. My name is Kevin, and I'm just representing my own self here. And I need two more arguments called left and right of type binary tree of person. In this case, I only want to represent myself in this tree, and so I don't want to represent any of my ancestors here. And so I'll just use empty trees for the remaining two arguments, so btp.empty and btp.empty. And there you have it, a binary tree that represents just me. Go back and look at the previous video. It's just that one record with my name in it, left and right subtrees with empty trees below them. Good. Now, <clears throat> Um, lean, the Lean Prover language doesn't really care about uh, white space, so I can put this entire expression on the next line. And typically, um, I like to do this, and in fact, I can put the arguments on their own separate lines, and I like to indent the arc, put, put multiple arguments to a constructor on separate lines, and to indent them a little bit. So here's the name of the constructor, BTP node, and here are its three arguments. Okay. So, suppose now that I want to represent, I want to build a binary tree of people to represent myself and my parents. So going back one generation now, um, I'm going to use made up names from my parents. I'm going to call them Mary and Biff. Okay? So I want uh, to build a tree with ma a node for me at the top, two sub 
two nodes representing subtrees, one for Mary and one for Biff, below, and each of them to have two empty trees below them, just like in the last video. In order, I'm going to basically build this tree from the bottom up. So I already have a way of representing an empty tree. It's called no one. And above the empty trees, I need nodes for Mary and Biff. And then above that, I need a node for myself. <coughs> Pardon me. So um, let me now define uh, nodes for Mary and just Mary and just Biff. So I'm going to define just Mary, that's my mom, um, to be, well, a non-empty binary tree of people. So it has to be btp.node. I can't use btp.empty. And I don't have any other way to build a binary tree of people. So my hand is forced here. And I'm going to uh, now type the arguments. So this will be Mary uh, with capital M. And uh, below Mary in this tree, I want there to be nobody else. So I'll again use btp.empty. Or because I've defined no one to mean btp.empty, I could also use no one here. Okay. So I could put btp.empty here again. I can replace that with no one because it means the same thing. And of course, I could replace this one with no one like that. And uh, indeed, I could use no one uh, throughout. And maybe that's a better, uh, a better uh, way of writing this because it communicates more clearly my intended interpretation that this is a binary tree of people with, in this case, Kevin in a node and no one below Kevin in the tree. Here we have just Mary, a uh, node with just Mary and no one below Mary. And now let's do the same thing for Biff. We'll define just Biff to be, um, well, a non-empty node, btp.node, okay? And the arguments, I'll indent them a little bit. So there's the name of the person I'm representing, my fictional father, with no one below him in the tree, and uh, on either the left or uh, the right side. So there. I now have represented nodes for three different people, uh, just those people. <clears throat> and now I want to define a tree to represent myself as well as my parents. OK, so I'm going to call this me and parents. OK, now that needs to be a, a non-empty tree with me at depth 0, so bt. Um, e dot node okay, with the arguments below it, me, and now I need two subtrees here. Well, what am I going to use as the subtrees? Below Kevin, <coughs> on the left, I want just my mom. Oh, we already have a tree for that. So we'll just put in just Mary here. And on the right hand side, just Biff, and that does it. Okay, I've built a binary tree of people to represent my ancestry going one generation back. In a small homework assignment that I'll give you after you have the Lean Prover up and running, you'll extend this to represent your ancestry going back, say, two generations. Okay, and I think you'll find it straightforward. Now, I want to give just one more version of this definition here of me and my parents, just to show you a different way of writing the same thing. Okay. Now, in Lean, just as in most programming languages, I can't give multiple definitions of the same symbol. So I'm just going to put a, a tick mark or a prime mark after the name me and my parents to, uh, to make it a different name. That's the same as you know using any different name at all. The, the tick mark or prime mark symbol doesn't have any special meaning. It's just another character. Okay, and what I want to show you here is that I want to represent me and my parents, so that's a non-empty node. Um, I have um, my name, and then I have these two subtrees. Just Mary here, what is just Mary? Well, that's just this entire definition here. That's this smaller tree. Okay, so the point that I want to make is instead of typing just Mary here, if I hadn't already defined just Mary, in parentheses, 
um, I can put the definition of Mary. So let me properly cut and paste this definition right in here. Okay, I need to fix up the indentation a little bit like this. And there you go. Okay. There's me and my parents. My name at the in the top node. Mary's node below it on the left. Biff's node below it on the right. And of course I could have taken Biff's definition uh, like this and used it instead. And you'll notice that I use a pair of parentheses to enclose these definitions. Uh, and that uh, is uh, so that Lean knows how to group uh, the symbols in these in these um, uh, in these definitions. So there is a complete uh, from scratch definition of a binary tree of people representing me and my ancestors going back one generation. You see, it's as easy as that. This isn't hard, but it does take an understanding of inductive definitions, these sort of semi-circular definitions where a big thing of a certain type, like a big tree, can be built from smaller things of the same type. A tree showing my whole ancestry is built from smaller trees showing my mother's ancestry and my father's ancestry going back a certain distance, in this case going back zero generations from where, uh, where they are in the tree. Okay, so that's it. That's how we define and use inductive definitions to represent discrete structures in the Lean Prover. And there's nothing here really to understand besides the mathematics of these discrete structures. Some minor syntax details, but you always have to learn minor syntax details when you're picking up a new language. And in the case of Lean, the syntax details uh, are very, very, very close to what you would write if you were just writing a mathematics textbook in the first case. Okay, so don't be afraid of learning uh, the, uh, the syntax of Lean. It's pretty straightforward if you understand the underlying concepts. So focus on the underlying concepts. We'll help you out with the syntax, and now you just have to get enough practice so that it becomes second nature, just like when you're typing Python programs or Java programs or, or formal expressions in any other uh, formal programming language or logic language. Here we're really just using Lean as a, as a simple programming language, albeit one that supports these concepts such as inductive definitions and case analysis. Case analysis. Okay, so now let's turn to the second part of this presentation where I promised I'd define an operation to count up the number of people in a binary tree of people. Okay, so how many people are there in a binary tree of people? Well, let's write a function definition for that. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to define um, a function, and I'll call it count people. Okay, and this is a function that has as its type a function that takes an argument of type BTP, a binary tree of people, backslash to space, and Lean puts in this nice arrow for me. And so I've said I want count people to be a, a function that takes a binary tree of people as an argument and returns what? A count of people in that tree. Well, how many people can be in a tree? Well, in the smallest tree, it's zero. And in any other bigger tree, it's more than zero. But it's an integer. So it's an integer that's greater than or equal to zero. That's a natural number. Okay? And in Lean, the type of natural numbers is called nat. And if you want to be really cool and use notation that mathematicians use, you can write backslash nat and a space, and you get this cool blackboard script n. Okay. So this says that we're going to define count people to be a function of the following type, a function that takes a binary tree of people as an argument and that returns a natural number. So how is this function going to work? How are we going to define it? Well. 
we have to go back to the inductive definition of a binary tree of people. So let's copy and paste this definition in down below here, right above, and these, this is the notation for comments in Lean. We see that if we're given a binary tree of people as an argument, there are two possible cases, two possible forms that that argument could take. Either it's empty or it's a node with a name and two smaller trees of people. And so we're going to define how this function computes its answer based on those two cases. And once again, we're going to use this vertical bar construct to represent cases. So in the first case, the argument to our tree, to our function is btp.empty. In other words, we apply count.people to an empty tree, and now we use colon equal, and on the right-hand side, we give the answer if the argument is the empty tree. So what result should we return? How many people are in the empty tree of people? Well, it's obviously just zero. Okay, and now we come to the second case. And here, in the second case, we're not given a binary tree of people that's empty, we're given a binary tree of people in the form of one of these node structures, okay? Where a node has a name of type string and two subtrees, each itself a, bin a smaller binary tree of people, okay? So what we can do um, is, um, and I'm gonna use parentheses here, and that's one of these little syntax details. I'm gonna say, well, in the second case, we're given an argument of the form btp.node applied to three arguments. And I could use any names that I want here for these arguments, like n, l, and r for uh, name left and right, but to make it my, my definition more readable, I'll just use the names from, uh, um, from uh, the definition here. Okay, colon equals, and now we have to write an expression that returns the number of nodes in a tree if the tree is of this form. So how many people are in a non-empty tree of people if that non-empty tree of people has one person at the top, some people in a left subtree, and some people in a right subtree. Take a minute to think about it. How many people are in a tree with a person at the top and a tree of people to the left and a tree of people to the right? Well, there's got to be one person in the tree at the top. And now all you have to do is add all the people in the left subtree and all the people in the right subtree, and you'll be done. And here's where that concept of an inductive definition comes back in the form of what we call a recursive function. We're in the middle of defining a function that counts the number of people in a binary tree Let's just use it here. Count people in the left tree plus count people in the right tree. Isn't that something? Okay, so I'm going to use some, um, some uh, formatting here to make the structure here clear. To compute the number of people in a non-empty tree, it's one for the person at the top of the tree, plus the count of all the people in the left subtree, plus the count of all the people in the right subtree. That's amazing. Okay, look at how concisely we can define an operation on binary trees of people, one that counts up and returns the number of people in a binary tree of people, no matter what binary tree of people you give it. Does it work? Well, let's think about it. Uh, let's document some, some test cases. We believe that if we apply count people 
to the empty tree, btp.empty, that we should get the answer zero. Yeah, there are no people in an empty tree. If we apply count people to the tree just me, well, we expect there to be one person in that tree, because there's one node containing my name and two subtrees, each of which is empty. So the, the number of people in that tree is one for me and then zero for each of the empty trees according to the first rule. Okay. And if we were to apply this operation count people to me and my parents, we expect the answer to be, well, one for me, plus one for my mom, plus zero for the two empty subtrees below her, so so far we have two, plus one for my dad, plus zero for each of the trees below him, so that's one plus one plus one is three. That's our expectation. Lean is a tool for automated reasoning, and so it supports automation. In other words, we can evaluate expressions and do other kinds of automated computing. There's an operation or function in Lean called eval that allows me to evaluate what an expression reduces to. So here I'm going to evaluate count people applied to btp.empty. And over here on the right-hand side of the screen, there's my answer. I'm going to apply this operation. Uh, this if I'm going to evaluate count people applied to just me. Yeah, and it's one. And finally, I'm going to evaluate count people applied to me and parents. And my answer is three. Now I haven't proven, I haven't proven that this function gives me the right answer in all cases. I believe that it does, but I don't yet have a proof object, a discrete structure that provides incontrovertible evidence that for any tree whatsoever, this function counts up the number of nodes in such a tree. Well. That's a topic that involves proofs and propositions, and that's a topic that we'll get into later in this course. For now, again, what I hope you learned from this uh, short video is that the Lean Prover is a tool for expressing and working with discrete mathematics in an extremely straightforward and automated fashion in a way that reflects the mathematics itself. This is a programming language, if you will, and a logic language that is based directly on the underlying discrete mathematical concepts that we're working with. In fact, what you can think of the Lean language as is a language of discrete mathematics, of discrete structures, and ways of articulating properties relations, propositions about objects, and operations involving objects. Here we've seen how we can use it to define an infinite set of possible binary trees of people, to instantiate that type of object in three or four different ways, an empty tree, a tree with just me, trees with my parents by themselves, and a tree containing both me and my parents and to use it to define recursive, in this case, recursive functions that consume inductively defined ob objects and tell us what their properties are. In this case, how many objects are in any given binary tree of people. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to the Lean Prover to give you a sense of what it feels like to use it and how and why I've chosen to use this tool for this course. In the next videos, I'm going to give you uh, instructions on how to set up 
uh, lean the lean prover on on your own computers, whether they be Windows or uh, or Mac uh, laptops or or desktop machines. Um, if you happen to use Linux, uh, the lean prover and VS Code will run there as well. Um, but uh, uh, if that's the case, you're probably already capable of of of, of setting it up yourself. So um, until next time. Thank you very much and see you soon.